Welcome to Wrestling with the Business. We're coming to you from the Insane Games studio here in beautiful Saratoga Springs, New York. I'm your host tonight, Matt Lambert, and with me are my tag team partners, the varsity athlete, Jeremy Beaudet, Adam Powerhouse Perry, and the general manager of Insane Games, the Iron Man, Dan Shevlin. Tonight, we're going through the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, the high spots and the chair shots in and around the business of pro wrestling. Dan, why don't you give our viewers a quick rundown of what we're talking about tonight? Yeah, Matt, we're going to do a recap of SmackDown, Raw, AEW this week. we got some news and rumors to go over. We're going to talk Roman Reigns. Is it too long now? Is it overkill? Is it hurting ratings? We'll talk about that. we got, um, we're going to talk Mickey James, her impact on impact, retiring, not retiring. So we got that to go over. And um, what else we got? we got uh, AEW, third show. Why? I don't know. I don't know. It could be what... I don't know. Saturday night action? We'll see. Could We're going to go over all that on wrestling to with punk. the business today. <laughs> Jeremy, what do you got for SmackDown? Any SmackDown action? was good this week. SmackDown was at uh, University of Nebraska. Uh, Michael Cole and Wade Barrett uh, on the mic doing commentary. Um, six interesting storylines uh, from this week. So the buildup continues between the, the KO, the Zane, the Riddle versus the Bloodline storyline. I have to say... It's getting a little tired. This storyline was by far the hottest storyline going into WrestleMania, and it's fizzled out at this point. I think it's kind of tired. They're overworking it, and um, I think uh, I think she's got too many miles on her. Um, the micro the micro story between Xavier Woods and L.A. Knight uh, came to a, a, a conclusion. Woods went overnight. Uh, it was a very solid match, and then they rushed right into another segment with Gunther. Um, trying to make something happen there. Um, again, that's probably going to come this Friday. Um, so not sure what's going to come with that. Um, the hottest thing right now that I think has taken over the bloodline is Judgment Day versus uh, uh, LWO. Um, it's the only thing that's getting over with the crowd right now. It's very hot. There's a lot of pieces on the board between LWO, Ray Ray, Dominic, uh, Rhea Ripley. The, the, there's a lot of pieces on the board to move. Uh, I think it's a very interesting storyline, and the crowd is very into it. So that's great. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura made a very lukewarm return. The crowd was not into it. The match against uh, Madcap Moss was extraordinarily rusty. I mean, this was the ru it was it was very very rusty, um, oh, and uh, it was it was it was an Bad. old tr it was an old Dodge truck. <laughs> it was very rusty. Um, How long was he gone? Three months. Oh, okay. He basically went to Japan to do a really big match that everybody pushed and took a break. Um, they teased a, uh, uh, a feud with Karrion Cross at the very end. Um, I don't know how that's going to get rushed or what. Uh, the women's tag team champs, who I've now dubbed Live Rod, um, are now basically holding down um, the women's division in SmackDown. Um, there's a lot of Twitter feuding. I've been following it on Twitter. There's a lot of Twitter feuding, a lot of water being thrown in the face, as I'm sure Adam will bring up. There's a lot of talk, not a lot of action, so that one's kind of boring. And the last interesting piece of news is this uh, Ricochet Braun Strowman tag team that they've cobbled together uh, is being set up against the Viking Raiders. Zero plot associated with it. Basically, the Raiders just jumped Braun and, uh, and Ricochet behind the scenes. Um, but I think it could be a very interesting match because they are great perform. All four of them are excellent performers. So I could be wrong, but that sounded a lot like the recap from last week. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I will say though, Xavier Woods. I'm hoping for a big individual push for him. I've always kind of liked him. You. you know, I, I mean, he does a lot. Obviously, he does a lot of video games. We go in the video game store. Absolutely. But I feel like he can go in the ring. I think he could be a good mid-title. I would. Intercontinental U.S. I, I was going to say. I'd love to see him take the Intercontinental Championship from Gunther, but it's going to trash Gunther's stock after the match oh, that yeah. he had in WrestleMania 39, where mm -hmm. he went toe to toe with two big dogs and managed to beat them both. And now you got Xavier Woods going over on him. I don't know. I think if they took another six months to to do, do the work right, with right, Woods, right. it could really work. But I don't know. Right now, it would just be. Rushed. I know they're both face, but I would love to see a ricochet. Xavier Woods rivalry. That would be good. But I'd love to yeah. see that. But I know they're both, I don't know, one would have to turn, I would think. But, like, well, you know, I, mean, not I don't necessarily, know. necessarily, I mean, you, you did something crazy like, you know, make a title relevant again. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and give it that, to one that, of them. That, yeah, that, that'd be uh, worth a, a face versus face match. Yeah. You know, 
Uh, overall, I'd give it two and a half out of five stars. It wasn't boring. The commentary wasn't terrible. There were no really terrible calls or anything like that going on. So I think it was a good show. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not surprised that the ratings are higher for SmackDown than they are for Raw because I think the content's better. So, well, speaking three, of Raw, hours. yes, what happened this week? The, 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 the WWE flagship show came from the Simmons Bank Arena in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we uh, started this show with uh, something different. We start with, uh, we see the Judgment Day and the Bloodline facing off in the ring together. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new Unholy Alliance brought together by Roman Reigns himself. Um, good tension between the two factions. They obviously don't trust each other. More to build later. You know, obviously one faction's going to turn face eventually. I think it's going to be the Judgment because they're just so hot right now, especially with Rhea Ripley. Mm-hmm. Um and from there, we go right into our first match, Solo versus Rey Mysterio, thir- uh, 12 minutes and 35 seconds. Um, they're clearly pushing Solo hard. Yeah, they should. Very, very hard um, to get a clean win over Rey Mysterio Jr. And isn't it interesting, Rey Mysterio's in the curtain jerk again, second week in a row. He's and he a, loses listen, again, second week in a row. He, I, I mean, that's his time. They, they always had Derek guys. Jeter bat first. I mean, there's a reason yeah, for that. Derek Jeter still got on base. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Ray gets on base. What are we talking about? <laughs> you know, and scores. You know. It's, it's but, the tradition to put the guys over on your way out, right? But, uh, but you, either way, uh, good match. Uh, they did make Solo look very strong. Ray did his job as uh, expected. Uh, next match, um, didn't even make it on Hulu, so that tells you how much the WWE cared about this match. And unfortunately, that was the women's champion, uh, Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine minutes, 55 seconds. It sucked. I'll just be blunt about it. It sucked. Uh, the crowd did not care at all. Damage control was out there. Um, no segments featuring them after last week's uh, and following WrestleMania's you know, drama with Bailey. Nothing to build this uh, damage control story at all. Um, we have more on that later. It, yep. It, it, yeah, and, and again, you know, we'll get into it, but one of the big rumors going into Raw was late in the day, a lot of segments were covered, particularly the women's segments, mm-hmm. which made for a very unhappy women's locker room, which could not have been a good time. Um, <laughs> a lot of passive aggressive comments. <laughs> so, for anybody. Uh, <laughs> so after uh, we, you know we you know we get the must anticipated Cody Rhodes addressing Ro- uh, Brock Lesnar. Typical. They do nothing. Cody beats up a few security guards. Match of the night was the next match. Match three: Seth Rollins versus The Miz. This match was fantastic. Twelve minutes, five yeah, seconds. It was a great match. Yep. They put on a show. The crowd was into it. The half of the match of the crowd singing Roman Reigns. Oh, not Roman Reigns. Excuse me. Seth Rollins' theme song to him, and a couple. This is awesome. Chance um, with uh, Rollins going over by pinfall after the stomp. The Miz can wrestle. Holy moly! Now you hard to yes. destroyed by <laughs> yes. Snoop Dogg. Uh, after which we get you know Riddle, Owens, and Zayn. You know. Riddle showing a little bit more serious side than the bro talk, you know, pitching his case to be with them in the six man tag that's coming up later and to join them at Backlash. Um, again, uh, another match that just kind of sucked. Uh, match four Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley. Um, crowd didn't care. Um, yet again, second week in a row, um, this match ends in a no contest with Lashley involved with. Um, What's his name? Uh, Reed. Um, Bronson. Bronson Reed. I'm, so, I'm terrible with the names. Um, interfering, beating up Lashley for a little bit. Obviously, they're building that. But, you know, after last week's match, does anybody really care? Right. Because the crowd certainly didn't. That <laughs> match lasted 12 minutes even. Uh, then we get our Trish Stratus explaining herself, you know. You know, she's the GOAT. Yeah, you know, she, she can made still her, talk. She, she made her case. You know, mm-hmm. um, and she looks amazing. She looks fantastic. Um, I can't disagree with you there. Then uh, another contender for uh, shittiest match of the night: um, <laughs> Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville versus <sighs> Muchin and uh, Candice LeRae. Three minutes, fifteen seconds. Thank God, at least it was you short. Know, uh, <laughs> you, you did have uh, <laughs> you did have um, you know special guests um, watching ringside: the champs, Liv Morgan and. Raquel Rodriguez. Live Rod. Let's get that Live uh, Rod. trending. Live Rod. That you trending. like that? Hashtag, Rod. hashtag Live Rod. <laughs> um, again, sloppy, boring, zero interest from the crowd. 
And, you know, and I'm going to say here, this is not me shitting on women's wrestling. WrestleMania, night one, the best match of the night was Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. This is not me shitting on women's wrestling with the last two I just reviewed. It's just terrible matches. They get a big, Plain and simple. They get a big problem in the locker room. They're you bad, and they're, it's out. bad booking. It's bad, bad booking. Yeah, yeah. It's I think bad it's booking. purposely uh, bad booking. Oh. I, think there's, I think there's a lot behind it. Yeah, I agree. All right, then we get our uh, main event of the night, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus The Judgment. This match goes 12 minutes, 20 seconds, with uh, Owens, Zayn, and Riddle winning by pinfall after the floating bro. Oh, yeah. uh, typical six-man tag, guys. Everybody gets in, does their finisher, does their thing. Post-match, you know, obviously we know what's going to happen. Bloodline comes in, beats up all the good guys. Then the LWO comes in, everyone goes, I'm happy. Um, Where is that? And uh, WWF, or WWE, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) uh, Call back. The World Wildlife Fund jumps in. (laughs) The pandas come in. Uh, You know, we go on to the next week. Um, here's 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 something to chew on, though. Because I've been, I've been purposely the last two weeks marking the times of the match. Raw is a three-hour show. This week we did one hour and one minute and seventy seconds of in-ring performance. So one third of the show is act, of a wrestling show is actually wrestling. We're gonna go to you with AEW. Think about this: AEW is a two-hour show, in-ring action, fifty-six minutes forty-one seconds. Half the show on a wrestling show, believe it or not, wouldn't you know, kids? Is wrestling. Mm-hmm. We know with that, Matt. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can be as exciting as uh, two eight man tags or whatever they're building to on Raw. <laughs> there, but geez, um, AW is a typically good show as it as it usually is. Um, they came from Pittsburgh, PA this week, the hometown of both Dr. Britt, Britt Baker, Baker, DMD, DMD, and Wardlow. Um, AEW is still having an issue, though, with sound production. It was very clear that, especially for Britt and for Wardlow, the crowd was really, really crazy, but the sound was so off, you really didn't translate over TV. So that's just a running a running thing through this whole episode. Um, Britt Baker match was in a tag match. That was a good match, obviously. The Chris Jericho and Adam Cole face-off. Excellent uh, promos, obviously, between the two. The beatdown afterwards was pretty pretty decent also. Britt Baker came out for the save, and then the outcast turned on her and started hitting her with a, with a kendo stick while Cole was strapped to the, um, to the, ro- to the ropes. That'll get you shiny. Um, Didn't Hogan do something like that with uh, Roddy Piper in a cage? They handcuffed him to... To the side of the cage, side of the yep. cage yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it, some kid in sting makeup jumped the, and everyone beat the <laughs> shit out of him. Yeah, that didn't happen this time, but <laughs> better security. Jump the cage. <laughs> the match of the night was the main event, Sammy Guevara versus Jungle Boy. Again, pushing the story along for the MJF match at uh, the pay-per-view. But what really stood out to me in this ma- in this episode was the TNT title. And it seems like they really have opposite of what we're going to talk about later with Roman Reigns. They really don't have a direction for the title. Seems to be a hot potato title at this point. I looked since November. There's been four different champions and six different reigns. It went from Samoa Joe to Darby Allen to Samoa Joe to Wardlow to Powerhouse Hobbs back to Wardlow. Mm. He won it in his home. Right in his hometown. So it really seems like a hot potato title at this point. Not really seeing where the dir- if they have a direction, if they have a plan. Kind of brought it down a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, good show as always. Sammy Guevara, he's one of my favorites. If I had to pick a wrestler from AEW that I like, it's Sammy. I think he's a, I think he's a company guy. Mm-hmm. I think he'll do whatever you ask him to go out and do. I think he takes his beatings. He takes his backstage the beatings. The crowd hates him, and he's a great heel. I think I really. I think he. They just, you know, there's certain heels that sell being a heel. Mm-hmm. You know, Dominic Mysterio. They hate him, and oh, that yeah. is they. He is selling a heel right now, like yeah. you wouldn't believe. And I think Sammy's up there too. Mm-hmm. I think he's great. I think he's. If I had to pick a top five elite wrestlers, he's in my top five. I don't know who my other four would be, but he's in my top five. I was on, I haven't watched the episode yet, but I was on Twitter tweeting my little ass away, and they were raking 
Jungle Boy across the coals really? for his work on the mic. They thought that his... He, they think he's junk, and he's not great. He's he's, he's weak. needs some work. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when you're standing in front of Darby Allen, and you're like, God, give the mic to Darby, please. I mean, Darby's not great either. Um, but you know, I, I and I kept saying it over and over again, like, give him some credit. He knows where his weakness is, and he's working on it. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's not as bad as Dominic Mysterio is on the mic. He's not that bad. But yeah, that was the one big takeaway. That and, and Wardlow's win taking the title. Um, those were just those were that was all social media. That was all they were talking about last yep. night. So, Dan, what about uh, some rumors and news and everything? What else is going on outside of the weekly shows? Well, let's jump right into ratings for a minute. SmackDown up, Raw down, AEW, I think it was up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Slightly, I Slightly. think. Slightly up. So, I mean, obviously, you know, SmackDown, I was shocked. SmackDown, like, I think it was like 2.2 million. 2.3, I think, Eight, yeah. I think it was 876 million. I think like 1.8 um, was Raw. So, I mean... Raw, I mean, there's been talk of Triple H has said he does not like the third hour of Raw. Oh, yeah, three hours of Raw years. is a money grab. Yeah. All it is is advertising. That's the only reason why there's three hours It's advertising. Right. It's all it is. That's the only reason why they make so much money off of the three hours of Raw. Um, so, but, I mean, I guess when you add in when you add in the promos, so you figure an hour, they're probably an hour 45 maybe of actual WWE content. And I would probably say the other hour 15 is probably commercials or... I mean, but, it's close. But here's the thing. We're, we're two weeks removed from WrestleMania. How many times do we need to see the highlights of WrestleMania? It's, uh, it's filler. It's, yeah. filler. You know, I mean, it's, it's time filler. It's con- to them, it's content digital filler. You know, you know? Uh, the so earlier in the week, all the chatter that I heard was, yeah, 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 that third hour, is, Triple H saying the third hour is basically impossible like to write for, and it really brings down the quality of the product. And then I heard talk of, well, maybe one way we can keep people for that third hour is to start bleeding in that third hour. So they're going to start putting their I heard that they're, they're trying to do like that. Remember the whole Shane McMahon content. thing? Like the, where they Raw do, Underground. Yeah, so they're trying to look at doing something a little bit, which it wouldn't be a bad idea. Just get rid of the third hour. I, much say, I mean, I know they're making a lot of money off of it, but like you can squeeze so much. And like, look at AEW. They can squeeze so much into two hours, and it's, it's nonstop action. And you could do that with WWE. You're they way outside out. of prime time. I, I don't know how much money they're making. Is I, the I third hour know. really their choice, though, or is it the network? Well, it could be that. We don't know the politics Well, and it's behind. been three hours for how many years it's now? 2012. 2012, it's been, yeah. It's been over ten years now, so I'm sure it's written into the contract. I mean, they're stuck with it. So speaking of shows, let's dive right into it. We talked about it earlier. AEW, a lot of talk this week about adding a third show. Collision, uh, it's a collision, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, collision. Collision. Yeah, Collison. Uh, Collison. Sorry, Collison. <laughs> on <laughs> on Saturday nights, for the sole benefit, from what I'm getting, the sole benefit is to put CM Punk on that show, and I don't know how they're gonna sell that. Is he gonna have? Is, is that show gonna have its own title? Are they gonna do like what Raw is doing with two different <clears throat> shows? They're gonna split the roster. He's supposed to be the star of that show. And I guess it's rumored to start in June. I heard it could be an hour show. It could be a two-hour show. But CM Punk is the focus of that entire show. And I'm sorry. I think <laughs> AEW is finally starting to get into the point where they have so many WWE exiles. So many people that I think they're starting to get a lot of trouble brewing with all the people they're trying to fit into one barrel over there. And I think it's starting to show a little bit, and they're trying to. I mean, when's the last time any show have put made a whole show for one wrestler? Yeah, look, I mean, well, we'll go that big. Well, well, there goes my point. I mean, if you um, anyone follows Eric Bischoff's eighty three weeks, he's said on at least half of his shows that you know it's brought up. Thunder, Thunder was made for Bret Hart. Hmm. So I mean, are are they did they dig out the old WCW playbooks and they're trying to do this again? Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he is a, Tony Khan yeah, is a big fan of WCW. You yeah. know, and, but you know how successful is Thunder? Right, Thunder, Thunder didn't even get off the ground, and and that goes to you know one of my points about this is all right, Dynamite, it, it's hanging on, but it, it it's got its issue. it does have a crowd, but mainstream wise, you know, in the it's barely hanging on. All right, we've tried um, all access, no one's watching. We've tried Rampage. No one's watching. You know, Battle of the Belts. No one's watching. Are we really going to watch? You know, even if we put CM Punk, you know, and then on top of that, you're, you're talking Saturdays starting in June. 
guys. Yeah, it's a dead zone. Guys, right. you know, it's summertime. You know, who's going to, you know, run back to their house, you know, after a barbecue at 6 o'clock in the evening and watch wrestling? Right. Well, to be fair, that's when WCW was their flagship show before Nitro was Saturday night, 6 and they 5. Were, and they were failing. <laughs> you know. You know, I, the, you know. The, he's doing this because he doesn't want to throw good money after bad. He knows he sunk how many millions of dollars into CM Punk, seven whatever million uh-huh. dollars it is. And he sees every day that goes by that Punk isn't in front of a camera as a lost opportunity. And he knows that after what happened with hands getting thrown and whatever in the locker room, he knows he's not going to be able to share a locker room with the elite or, you know, whoever else in there he might have pissed off on his way out the door. And I I mean, I can understand it from a business standpoint, especially if, if, if Turner is hungry enough for material that they're going to give him an hour for basically nothing or even two hours on a Saturday night. It's like, well, what am I going to do? I got to, I got to run the horse. So like, where we are right now is because we obviously we're talking about this in a little bit, so I don't want to go too far into it. So I think the, 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 where we are right now with it on the, on the rumor side news is that I guess CM Punk, Jericho, Tony Khan, and um, what was the other one? Uh, FTR are all meeting to go over how to create this show. I mean, does that mean they're all going to be part of it? I can see Jericho going there. I don't know. But one way or another, they're going to have to fill that show if it's going to be an hour or two hours. You put a hidden camera on the wall of that office, and you'll get an 8.5 rating. (laughs) Okay? You put a hidden camera up there, you broadcast that, that'll be an 8.5 minimum. Continuing AEW news, um, Kenny Omega has not signed a contract. He is working off of his old contract. With injury clause, I think he goes until about I think October and November. So Tony Khan extended it because he was injured for a while. You know, we saw Cody Rhodes leave. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Kenny Omega is happy or not there, but I think you're starting to see. You know, Tony Khan created this obviously with Cody and, and Kenny and the Young Bucks, and and I think you're you know when I remember when I saw this create create, I'm like that's a lot of guys in the kitchen right there that eventually. That's gonna boil over, right. and you know there's just too many. I mean, at some point, the young bucks will have an idea that can get shot down, or Cody Rhodes will have an idea and get shot down, or Kenny Omega will have an idea and get shot down, or they all may like an idea and Tony Khan doesn't. You know, is that supposedly they the were taking like, you know, Cody was the men's singles, yeah, uh, Kenny was the women, the Bucks were focusing on the tags, so that was supposedly how they were keeping things. Tony Civil. Khan likes the power. Right. He does. He's become a young Vince McMahon. He likes the power. He likes to make the decisions. You know, he may be alienating a lot of those guys. And obviously, Cody left. Obviously, there's issues there. Whatever you know, whatever it may be. Um, but I think there's the potential for Kenny Omega to really say, "I'm out of here." You think he's going to leverage it with Punk? I don't know. But the fact that he is not—I mean, come on—he's got to be their. Would you say he's their biggest star? Oh yeah. To, Them, to him not, and Moxley. To not have a, a renewed contract signed, it doesn't why look not? Good. It why doesn't not? Look if, good. if I'm Tony Khan, I'm going to sign a yeah. goddamn contract and lock my top guy in. So why is that not done? Maybe I mean it, either it's about money or Kenny Omega is not ready to sign and they don't agree on something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's got to be an issue there somehow. Um, Fifty thousand pre-sold tickets for AW's event in London. I don't know. We that was that pre-sold or was because uh, the. Pre-sold tickets, 50, pre-sold, 000. or yeah. Um, yeah. was it something like reserve? Like, like pre, yeah, pre, yeah, like pre. pre right? Cause, cause, it's pre because I think May fifth they go on yeah, sale. So not right. actually, it's like pre. I guess like it's like saying like you said pre, you're registered so that you register yeah. get the ticket. That's the word register. Yeah. So I mean that could be. I mean I don't know. How, did they say how much that stadium fills? Ninety thousand. Nine. So I mean if that's the case, and they're almost. I mean they're already more than I mean, they're getting there. Supposedly. Um, yeah. So Some that's with no card announced or anything like mm-hmm. that. Right, exactly. So that's kind of the AEW news I have. Edge last match is rumored to be in August um, in Vancouver. So that's I guess he's always wanted that. He's always wanted his match in Canada to be his last match. So everyone's kind of timing up. Or SummerSlam, I believe, is there. Detroit. So, is it Detroit? SummerSlam is at Ford Field in Detroit. No. So what's in August, and that would be in, in Canada? Have, I just, just a a random war SmackDown. Out. Like I don't know. Apparently, he's looking to retire. And How show? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I got. Maybe I read that one wrong. So I'm not going to look that up. But um, um, no concerns with Seth Rollins. So there's a lot of rumors around this week that he was had some backstage heat. I guess Freddie Prince Jr. said that he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. walked out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have you guys gone back and watched the segment? Yeah. 
was was, weird. Seth, was he was he pissed? I've been meaning to go back and watch. It. I just I can't. He was annoyed. he like really pissed at it? Or he looked annoyed. I mean, I, 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 I said... couldn't tell if he was smiling like as the world is burning around him as he was walking because he was smiling like really big when he walked out of the ring to go back and like I don't know, man. But I couldn't tell whether it was like, hey, I'm going with the flow, or hey, the world is burning. Like I don't. I've been meaning to go back know? and look, but I haven't seen. I haven't seen the video that he's. I guess he's saying like, what the fuck, or why? Why are we going to commercial? I guess he, he was caught saying on. He TV. did. I did see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, so there's a little bit of he had a little bit of tension there, but I guess there's nothing to it. Um, his wife Becky Lynch also rumors that she was having a little bit of an issue, but that's not the case. Her contract is up in 2024. So she's obviously looking for a raise, so they're kind of negotiating that. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I can see a little Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch uh, working the WWE management a little hmm. bit for something. I mean, I don't know what – I don't know Seth Collins' contract, but if he's unhappy, I'm sure Becky Lynch knows about it, and I'm sure vice versa. What are yeah, the so. chances the other three, four horsewomen end up in Japan with Sasha? I don't know, but I heard she's asking uh, for a good Char- raise. Charlotte is looking at doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. Bailey's supposedly not happy. I don't know. It's possible. Um, WWE ESPN working on a deal for some new video content. I don't know what they would I mean. It's not a new TV deal, but they're looking at doing some kind of um, show on ESPN similar to... I don't, Tough Enough it, or something what, like what that. What do they have in a, A&E? What if biography, they, biography? Oh stuff, yeah, so it might yeah. be they're looking to do something like that. Like so a thirty for something 30 or similar something. to A and E. So, um, hmm. so that's cool. Cody Rhodes, I guess, met a lot of people in WrestleMania to go to Hollywood. He's yeah, I heard that. Movies. Yep. So I mean, that could be a big hit. He was trying to take some meetings there. in LA. Yep. I heard uh, WWE is allowing wrestlers on Twitch again. Goldberg mm-hmm. looking for a retirement tour. And as Adam kind of said already, the WWE women are pretty unhappy in Raw. So I guess a lot of changes were cut last minute. <laughs> Damage control segment was completely wiped off. The whole yep. um, that was on there and it got taken off, and I mean even stuff that was already like filmed was pulled. So I mean there's some there's some drama backstage. Uh, um, Vince McMahon in control, even when he's not. I there. don't know what the deal is with that, but um, yeah, yeah. So that's news and rumors this week. So maybe a little bit of a quiet week. We're a little you know two weeks off of WrestleMania. You know, obviously a lot of contracts working and some potential storylines that could get interesting down the road. Um, that right. Twitch thing is huge because the the cut that WWE is taking out of it is coming out of Twitch's part. Yeah. So Not the wrestlers, wrestlers are getting yeah. to keep everything. So to me, that's a sign of a power shift because there was a huge push. Obviously, Selena Vega left over it and then got brought back. But there, you could tell there was a lot of push from the wrestlers basically saying, hey, you're preventing me from making money on my name. You can't, you can't have it both ways. I'm either an independent contractor or... Or I'm an employee. You that was one of the main reasons like Adam Cole went to AEW because he wanted to keep his Twitch. Yeah, and I heard there was absolutely no restrictions. Like it's like pretty much they can do. Yeah, the only thing I heard is if you're going to bring somebody outside of the WWE universe on, you got to get permission right. first. Um, right. Which so. uh, again, to me, the fact that they folded that quickly, that they're taking a piece of Twitch's pie instead of the performers' pie, to me, that is just a huge shift in power between management and talent. And I think it it could really open the door to to some big changes in the future. So yeah, so that's news and rumors. This All right. week. Well, you're not off the hook yet. Oh boy! Tell us what's grinding your gears this week. Well, <laughs> it, it's, it's what's been grinding my gears for a long time, and um, we talked. I brought it up briefly last week, and that is authority figures on Raw and SmackDown. Let's say WWE in general. NXT. William Regal is still the general manager, right? He does he still go on TV? Does he no? I he don't know. left and he came back. Does he go back on TV as general manager? Or I no? don't. I actually I don't think so. I think I don't AEW. think he actually, I, don't think, I don't think he has either. Yeah. So, but that was the only show for like a while that had the general manager and like mm-hmm. no no other show. The last authority figure we had was Shane on SmackDown as commissioner and Stephanie as commissioner. And you have Triple H who comes out with a title and then it's taken away from a week later. So who knows of that? But. I'm. I mean, what? Go, I mean, when you're looking at storytelling on WWE, how does stuff get decided? Like, what if, if if Finn Balor wants to go fight Roman Reigns, who makes that match? Like, who is there? And then there's a whole. Go back to the Attitude Era, you know. There, then there's a whole storylines of the the evil commissioner and the mm-hmm. and the backstabbing general manager, like. It adds stories and it adds volume to the rivalries a little bit that you just don't see. Redo the storylines. It doesn't have to be 
the McMahon Helmsley era again, create a new faction with a commissioner following the same type of storyline as the McMahon Helmsley faction, but redo it with the new wrestlers. Are we really going to complain about that? It's great TV. It was great drama back in the day. Like, there's no... If I was Vince McMahon right now, if I bought WWE, I would install a WWE commissioner. Not a general manager in both shows, which I don't mind that either, but I would install one commissioner that oversees the entire wrestling organization. Shawn Michaels, Mick Foley... Mick Foley, Mick Foley. I mean, it kept going and kept going and kept going. But like, Bruce Pritchard. I mean, like, <laughs> add, love. add somebody who's running the show. AEW still does it. I think Tony Khan comes out. Mm-hmm. And then who's the other guy? Isn't there another guy that does? No, just Khan. Or is it just Khan? Okay. Yeah. So like, you gotta have. In my opinion, I think it not only adds balance, it adds structure, but it also it adds some volume to the storylines. You know, put, make Kurt Angle commissioner again. Make him the commissioner. You know, he was a general manager of Raw. Just make him the commissioner. And, you know, people want to see Kurt Angle. He's entertaining. Throw him out as a commissioner. He doesn't have to be on every show. But like, then you got Adam Pierce. What's Adam Pierce's role? Is WWE he, official. Yeah, like, what does that fucking mean? <laughs> Come on, like, give him an it's, actual title. It's commissioner for the women's division. Because <laughs> he only interacts with the, with the women. That's, 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 that's with Cody. Right, he was with Cody Raw. last night, like, uh, Monday night. You know... But right. that's right. You're There's right. no consistency. That's now. That's it, most of his interactions have been with the women. Mm-hmm. Paul Heyman is a genius. Mm-hmm. I, I was going to say Paul Heyman is. <laughs> he is a genius, but he has come out and said that he thinks the authority figure storyline has been abused over and over and over and over again, and it needs to go. So I blame him for this. I really do think he probably made the decision <laughs> on it. But like. What do you guys? Do you guys no, no, no. like an authority figure running the show? Any show. It doesn't have to be WWE. Just any structure. I think it makes for better television having someone who can come out when there's a when there's bickering in the ring. You know, cue Kurt Angle. Hey, I think we're gonna make a match tonight. And it's like there's none of that. You know what I mean? You mentioned William Regal in NXT. That was the best use of yeah. a general manager. Yeah. You only see him sparingly. He announces the big matches. He has a little shouting match with the heel in the back, but overall you don't really see him that often. You can even go further than that in real old school, Gorilla Monsoon. He was over like every time he stepped out and they used him sparingly. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden he's being attacked by Vader. (laughs) I mean (laughs) you know, I mean like that watching him get splashed by Vader was like Everybody You're not talked about, to for, touch about him. for about a month. It yeah, was epic. yeah. You talk Gorilla Mon- uh, Monsoon. So, yeah, you don't have to have him directly involved, but yeah, I agree. Someone to make the final say, the final decision, the you know. And whatever they do, it just needs to be consistent. Right. They can't have yeah. him make a match one week and then the next week. Oh, I don't know what to do. You right. know. Right. Whatever. Even Paul Heyman knows that you have to have that kind of structure because there have been multiple times in recent weeks in which he has had said, "Well, I just got off the phone with the tribal chief." Right, and he set up this and match Roman right. between, <laughs> t- and it's it like, wait sense. a minute. So what? So what does it mean when you're universal champion? <laughs> like, He's a commissioner what, now too. What like, kind of like <laughs> you get to decide if Kevin Owens is going to wrestle one of the members of your bloodline? Like what is going on? Like what? So, is yeah. Going so that's on? my rant. And you know, and speaking of Roman, let's jump right into hot topic number one. <clears throat> yep. We got we got Roman Reigns 962 days as the. Undisputed Universal Champion. I have my thoughts. Someone else want to go first? Well, that 962 is a little misleading. He's had the Universal title for that long. Right, 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 right. The WWE title he's only had for 380 days. Only 300. They just lump it all together. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, the Bloodline storyline for a while was the best storyline in WWE, if not in all of wrestling. Sami Zayn, especially when he got added to the mix... The crowd really got into it. He was, before that, he was just a chicken shit heel that everyone hated. But with that storyline, it was an organic build. It was an organic face turn. When he finally turned on Roman, the crowd went nuts. Um, so that that may, makes me ask the question, should he have beat Roman? Has this gone on far too long? I mean... Once you have a hot baby face like that and then he fails, where do you go from that? But then you build up Cody to be the next hot baby face and then he fails. Where do you go from there? So 
Dan, I'm going to I'm going to ask you this question. So he, for so long Roman was pushed, some people say shoved down our throats mm-hmm. to be the top guy, but no one liked him. Everybody hated him. Everyone kept saying he had to turn heel and to, you know, bring life back into the story, whatever right. you want to say. Um and then we got that, but now three years later, has it gone on too long? I mean, you, you, you yes, you can't <laughs> say it hasn't gone on too long. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, I, I think you know when you go back and look at Roman back in the day when he was being shoved down our throats like John Cena and and, and, and pushed and pushed and pushed. The right, the one of the best de- decisions that WWE has made in the last five years is to turn him heel. Put him with Paul Heyman. And I think even when they did that, they didn't even have the whole tribal chief angle yet. Right. It was was the beginning of what became a great storyline, a great faction. You know, I I think he's deserving of, you know, it was good for business for a while. I can sell it, too, with one title for this long. You know, I can say, hey, you know what? He has a universal title for 962 days. We well, you know what? You saw the World Heavyweight title on someone else. I think it's overkill that now you've put in both titles. And I think they could have done that for like three months, four months. Maybe he had a six-month story where he had both titles for a while. Maybe he was the ultimate. But come on. Look at the talent in WWE. Mm-hmm. I mean, where do you start? Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, um, Cody Rhodes now, Edge. I mean, the list goes on and on of top guy Kevin Owens. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going. Does he really need to have two titles? I mean, is it is wrestling and is the roster really that weak? Like, I think it's a great story. I think the music is great. I think their angles are great. I think their catchphrasing is great. The whole thing is great, but it's overkill now. It's overkill, and I love it. I love the theme song. I can I go when I'm running, when I go on a run, I listen to the theme song. It's just it's a great pump up music. I think it's great, but it's overkill now. It's overkill. Well, I mean, I, I think what they got to do is they just got to do away with two titles, one title, right? You know, not a sep- you know different champions. Okay, so even with one, the brands, just just one main title, keep it on run, but keep it on raw. You know, can keep it on. I mean, well, he's if he's the champ, he can go both shows. I, yeah. Okay. He, he's the champ. So he can't be drafted. He can't be drafted. He's he's. Hmm. he's See, I disagree. Yeah. I think champion one, champion two should be on the shows, and that's it. Really do the draft the right really, way. That's well, a whole I other, mean, yeah, that's a whole different yeah. discussion. But you know, my thing is, is you know, with it just going too long, we all know what the payoff eventually is going to be. It's going to be the Roman Reigns versus the Rock. You know, so so that my question is, is how long do we really keep the title on Roman? Because. Unless they're completely stupid, you don't put the belt on The Rock again. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that match, The Rock and Roman Reigns, even needs the title? No. No. That's the point I'm I'm getting at. You know, how long, you know, we know the payoff is going to be The Rock's return for one match against Roman Reigns. You know, why, you know, so how long do you keep this belt on him? You don't need to sell The Rock. The Rock is going to fill the stadium just by himself. You know... So, all right, you know, put on your tinfoil hats. So, 962 days as of yesterday. That means that he needs 38 more days to get to a thousand. 38 days is May 27th. What is happening on May 27th? Night of Champions in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Mm-hmm. So, I wonder, and this was related to the last episode of Strictly Business, a listener wrote in and asked Eric Bischoff if it's possible that the Crown Prince was buying a championship to change hands to the tune of $30 million Hmm. to have the cloud of saying after a thousand days, the longest reign, universal champion, championship changed hands from Roman Reigns to Cody Rhodes. Interesting. That would be exactly a thousand days. It's a nice round number. Fits nicely in the record books. 
longest rain ever will be the longest rain for at least a real at least another thousand days but i don't think cody would hang on to it for a thousand days so i think you know from a conspiracy theory perspective those puzzle pieces fit together very nicely especially given the fact that vince is back in the picture yep money they talks love the money money yeah. talks and 30 million dollars if you have that guarantee that's going to help you with the evaluation when it comes time to make a deal with endeavor endeavor needs to make their money back i mean i just think it fits together very well and i think he could very well drop the title in that could be a good reason yeah i think that makes a lot of sense to me so so from a business standpoint, that might work. But from a fan standpoint, um, Adam, let me ask you. You are an old school fan. Yeah. There are five reigns, title reigns, that are longer than Romans. Pedro Morales, 1,027 days. Bruno San Martino, 1,237 days. Hulk Hogan, 1474. Brother. Bob Backlund, 2135. Bruno San Martino, again, 2803. All those old school guys... The fans were crazy into him, obviously, <clears throat> but they did not have the sort of exposure that Roman Reigns has now. Exactly. So can this type type of title reign work from a fan standpoint? Or are they just going to give up on it? Um, I think eventually, you know, eventually they are going to get bored. Um, again, you know, he, he, Hulk Hogan didn't, you know, start appearing on weekly television until 1993 mm-hmm. when Raw debuted. So, I mean... You know, seeing Hulk Hogan, the champ, was special. Right. You know, seeing Bruno San Martino, it was special. We see Roman Reigns every SmackDown, every Raw. They're hiding him now. Every pay per view. Mm-hmm. They're hiding him. He's well, like, he's, he's also part-time. got a part time contract yeah. too. He hasn't been there since WrestleMania, yeah. so they've been hiding him. So, but still, like, you know, I agree. I, you know, I, you know, you can even make the argument it's starting to get old now. Oh, absolutely. You know, so, I, I already so, said it. I think Sami Zayn should have beat him, and if Sami Zayn doesn't, then Cody definitely should have. Well, it's I mean, gone Co- on far too. Yeah, I, I think Cody. I don't know about Sami Zayn. I like the storyline. I think but, Cody Rhodes can handle it. I think Cody Rhodes. You know, I'm not a big believer in the whole. Oh, can he sell the two titles? I think that's bullshit. But I don't know. But I look at Sami Zayn like just like the Undertaker. I could never see the Undertaker with a title. Like he's just not a title guy. Like can you do you see Undertaker walking out with it? You know, he's just not. He doesn't need it. You know what I mean? I think that's why he never really had it that much. Like, I don't see The Undertaker as a title holder. Like, there's some personalities that just don't need the title, or I, mean, I don't want to say don't deserve the title, but like Sami Zayn, I just don't see the, I don't see the two belts on Sami Zayn. I'm not saying he should have kept it long, <coughs> right, but right. He, oh, was, yeah. he was so over with the fans, just seeing that moment with him winning, that would have been, you know, that would have made up for any no, crappy agree. match at WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, here's, I think... The perfect time to drop it was clearly WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and they blew it. Yeah. Um, plain and simple, I, you know. So you know, where it goes now, whether it's the Saudis, you know, I think it it lost the magic. You know, the I mean, you had the, the build, you know, with Cody Rhodes. I mean, what I Cody Rhodes has proven that he's the best in the world right now, in ring and on the mic. He really, he really, really is. Mm-hmm. And you blew the opportunity to really make his win something meaningful, something special. Right. With uh, the Samoa Joe wannabe <laughs> popping in. So Great value Samoa Joe. That's what we're calling him. <laughs> yeah. Great value. So, I, you know, and, and again, that, I mean, you know, if we could rewrite history, you know, um, Cody goes over clean. Wins the match, and then after he has his celebration, Reigns is still in the ring, and the rock music hits. Now you have six months till SummerSlam to build Rock Roman, or even do like he did with John Cena and build it for a year, having Rock pop in and out to mess up the uh, the bloodlines. You know, good time or Roman's. He would know. be the only authority above Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Who's left now to actually? Go so, up against Roman. so I, I, I really, right. you know, so, so now, yeah, I, I think what, ha- you know, with what happened at WrestleMania, you, you really blew, uh, to keep everything fresh because now, now the, the, the storyline, yeah, it, it's, it's going to have its moments, you know, like we're seeing with this alliance with Judgment Day, now the LWO coming back and and doing <coughs> their thing, yeah, it's going to be exciting, you know, it's going to have its moments, it's but it fresh. is not going to have. The momentum, the the focus, the story 
than it did going into WrestleMania. It's just not. They blew it, plain and simple. Just as a side note, you guys know the one title reign that's even longer than Bruno San Martino's 2,800 days? Someone has a longer title reign than... Oh, yeah? According to seven WWE. Seven and a half years. <laughs> the professor, Matthew Lambert. <laughs> Fabulous Moolah had the women's oh, title. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. 27 years. Okay, all right. Yeah, of course. Um, so, Jerry, let me ask you about ratings. <clears throat> WWE had their lowest recorded ratings, mainly for Raw, uh, all during uh, Roman's reign. So, has his reign helped to make the company money has he helped to draw the fans in on tv or in in the arenas i think that the the company has struggled as of late for more reasons than just him i mean you can't put it all on his shoulders sure. i think that um you can't you can't a heel can hold the title for a long time but he's not a heel He's not really a heel. He's, he's a he's a cool heel. He's an aberration. He's there, but he's, he's on a part time contract. It's the same issue they they uh, when they put the title on Brock Lesnar. Yes. He's there, but he's not there. It's like you can't be the champion and not show up all the time. It looks really bad. It dilutes the value of the title, the value of the championship, holding it, having to defend it on a regular basis. Even if you're just standing there holding it, it makes you look strong. Um, say what you want about putting the title on the Miz. He showed up every week yeah. and held that title, and it mm-hmm. made him look bigger. Yep. You know, and, and again, that goes to the, the the question you asked me. You know, are we seeing him too much? You know, you know it. Yeah, he's on TV, but like again, we go back to the old days. Hulk Hogan, every little house show, that man showing up with you know to drop a leg and flex and show the title. Hogan must pose. Hogan must pose. He was there. I mean, even in little old Glens Falls, New York. Yeah. You know, my father saw him in probably what, what, over almost 30 years now. Yeah. You know, so, and, and again, that's the difference. Bruno Sammancino was at every little show. You know, so he made sure that everybody got to see him, but, you know, the, 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 the circus didn't come back to town for, a year, for, for another right year now. or so. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and, uh, you know, you so can, every Monday and every Friday, you, I think, uh, you know, I mm-hmm. think the fans want the title separated. They don't want a Two universal titles. championship. Yeah. I think that they, they want to see a split. Um, and I think that you can you can do two things. You can make Reigns a heel. It's not too late. It's, I, I don't think it's especially heel. I mean, if you try to get him to turn face. A okay, real it's, heel, it's, you mean. But if you, yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother rant for another time. Heels aren't heels anymore. But um, I think he can be saved. Um, but, you know, this it's one symptom among many that's making the ratings slip. Um, it is interesting that I think you see Reigns more on Raw and, than on SmackDown, but Raw's ratings are worse. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. There could be something to that. There could not be, but either way. Cable. Could be cable, yeah. Fox is basic cable. Yeah. And U.S. is... Uh, USA, USA is... Uh, cable. Cable, cable. Cable, cable. cable. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so it's official. Roman needs to lose the title. Yeah. We solved it here. So... Take notes, At Night of Champions. <laughs> At Night of Champions. Um, Bruce, call us. <laughs> so we already talked a little bit about AEW Collision Collison, whatever the trademark ends up being. Um, totally lost my place here. Oh, okay. So, again, getting back to Collision, Adam. We were talking about the, the show being... Um, fixated around CM Punk, reportedly. Yeah. But there's always been criticism for AEW about having a bloated roster and a lot of their wrestlers not getting TV time, not getting a push. Is having this new show a way to have AEW have their own sort of brand split? It, it could be, you know, if AEW, you know, was... If they were... If dynamite was as big as it should be, then yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think you you got to get the audience watching AEW first right. before you try to bring on multiple shows and multiple you know and roster splits. You know, just focus on putting on the best damn show once a week you mm-hmm. can. You know, build an audience. 
build a following. I mean, like, yeah, again, you know, it's like your hardcores are always going to be there, you know? Mm. Wrestling, uh, it's like we were talking, you know, the difference between um, WWE being worth this much and the UFC being worth that much. Guys, you know, the general public is going to go to a bar and watch a UFC fight, you know, but tenfold over someone going to the bar watching the Royal Rumble. Yeah, they won't. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and again, and, and it's so niche. So yeah, AEW is always going to have those hardcore fans, and we're the hardcore fans. We love it. You know, we love seeing a uh, more independent, more show catered to us fans. But that's not going to be successful in the long run. They got to make a good product. They got to make a product that appeals to to more than just the hardcores. So my thing is, you know, before there's any sort of roster split, you know, it if your show's not working with what you're doing right now, throw in some of those guys. See if what they can offer in the ring works. See if the storyline that they can offer works. Make Dynamite the show. And then after a year or two of Dynamite kicking ass, all right, let's try maybe a one-hour show on a Friday night or a Saturday morning or whatever. You know, <clears throat> Dynamite's got to be the focus. Raw was the... How many years did Raw go before SmackDown was even thought? At least eight, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, eight years of Monday Night Raw before we see SmackDown. Why isn't Tony Khan courting Netflix? You know, eight, well, that was going to be my next question. Obviously, AEW is really young for this to have this many hours of TV, pay-per-views, Ring of Honor, YouTube shows. Is Tony Khan setting up for a potential streaming service? He could just be. building up content. I mean, I think I think he's over leveraging himself a little bit with all the shows. I mean, I don't think he needs a third show. I think let's take, you know, let's take the two shows we have. Let's make them two hours. You know, live. Let's not do Rampage taped. They mm-hmm. definitely have enough wrestlers and superstars to fill two shows, two hours. They got enough championships. I don't like why the third show is being presented. It's only being presented to satisfy CM Punk. I mean, I think that's just a bad way of doing business. You know what? We're going to create a show, a third show, on a Saturday to please one. I don't... I mean, the YouTube stuff, that's all content. That stuff is not... I mean, that's all... That's going to help build superstars reputation you know that's gonna start that's all additional content and in media digital stuff like you know they want to build a youtube channel that's great that's all value they can get down the road and further advertising but like stick to the two shows don't do the third make the second show rampage two hours make it live like smackdown and not taped and i think they can have a good and just work off of that they look at the good wb they did Raw and SmackDown, 1999. You know, you had Thunder and you had Nitro. Like, just do two shows. No need for a third one, especially on a Saturday night. But, like, I'm but, sorry, I'm not watching AEW on a Saturday night. I watch wrestling five other days of the week. <laughs> I'm not watching it on but, my Saturday. But, but, but again, just to go back to my point, like, even, like, Nitro and Thunder. Nitro was around for five years before Thunder shows up, you know? They built Thunder. They built Thunder, you know? Three, three, three years, three years. Three all right, years. but well, still, you still yeah. had you know three years of all the focus on one show right. to make it the best show they could put on. And they were still doing Saturday night at that. And they point were still too. doing Saturday. And, and the thing about Saturday night, though, is you know we touched on it earlier. Why no one's watching us? And I'm I'm sorry, and I love WCW, old school WCW, but let's face it, guys. The only reason why WCW was on Saturday nights. For as long as it was, was because from Ted himself because he was a fan. Mm-hmm. The the business was failing. WCW was in the tank, and the only reason why he kept his spot on Saturday night was because of Ted. So you know, then you get the Bischoff area come in, Monday Night Raw, it, it, that changes the game. But still, you had that that period of just every you know eighty three weeks or eighty three weeks they made the best fucking show they could, you know, and it. We saw what it did. That's what Dynamite has to do. Dynamite has to make... AEW has to make Dynamite the best possible wrestling show they can produce. And then once that takes off after three or four years, 
all right, yeah, let's look at doing another show and giving more content. You know, they got you know they got to make uh, Dynamite the show. <clears throat> Jeremy, let's not forget their new flagship show though, AEW All Access. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, I don't knock it. Like my <clears throat> fiance watches that show. She's not a wrestling fan, but she loves that show. It's following, especially because it's following Sammy. She loves Sammy Guevara. So t- yeah. So two comments. So first, this clearly to me represents the WWEification of AEW. This was this is waters that have already been well tread, well tread, well trodden. Well swam by WWE. They've done the behind the scenes, the the behind the kayfabe type stuff. Total divas, um, total bellas. Exactly, and it has done as yeah. we've mentioned before. It's done some things to boost some of the careers of the individual workers inside. I don't think it really did anything for WWE. All access is clearly um, Tony Khan's attempt to appeal to the female audience. If you look at all of the demographic breakdowns, and I haven't done this in recent years, but I did do it a while back, it is astounding how well-balanced WWE's audience is. It's like 60-40 men to women. All the age brackets are like evenly represented. If you look across the country, it's, it's, it's amazing how well-balanced the entire demographic is for the WWE audience. It is not that way for AEW. <laughs> it is all men. It's all men between like 18 to 34. I mean, it's basically our demographic. And um, and it it's designed to appeal to them. And the female audience is Zippo, especially 18 to 34. So this is their opportunity to try to rope them in. Oh, we've seen a behind the scenes. Oh, maybe I will sit down with my husband, with my boyfriend and watch. Um, the ratings do not reflect a very uh, successful run so far. It's only been, what, three weeks, I think? Four. Four weeks. And they were at, like, I think 281 to start. 339, and then they went to 281. I haven't seen last week's yet, but... It's also on at 10 o'clock at night, too. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I think it's doing what it needs to do, but you have to get people to tune in at 8 o'clock to get them to stay until 11 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, to your point, if they can drive those numbers higher, if they can consistently get above a million, then you might see some traction. Oh, wife's getting into bed just as the show's go. Oh, no, no, keep it on, keep it on, keep it on. I want to watch this. You might have something there. But I think right now it's it's Tony Khan's desperate attempt to widen the audience demographic. All right. All right so good. we've uh, solved it again. Tony Khan, don't do a new show. Call us for well, suggestions. It's like Tony Khan learned how to produce a TV show. <laughs> you know, stop being a wrestling fan and make a TV show. Or hire somebody that can because there's yeah, plenty so of them out there. Exactly. All right, so our third and final talking point for tonight. Um, possibly a little sad news. Mickey James has been injured, had to relinquish her knockouts title at the at Impact's most recent pay-per-view this last weekend. Looking like she might be retiring. I don't think oh. she is. You don't think so? I don't know. I think she's probably just injured. They're probably, you know... You gotta look at Mickey James, is her career, and what is she now? She's a... Close to being a Hall of Famer in WWE, probably. She should be, if she is. She I mean, be, yeah. so at this point... Her and Victoria still have to go. I on. think she probably said... Yeah, Stacey Keebler's in, but she isn't. Right. Yeah, come on. She yeah. probably said, I'm not 100%. I shouldn't hold up the title. And I'd rather have someone else in Impact, another female take the lead and help build I mean if, if that's what truly is happening then she deserves a lot of credit for that for making you know I don't think she's selfish I don't think she wants to be I'm going to hold the title for three more months when I'm injured and you know it's reported that she's been injured I think some broken ribs and mm-hmm. um, so, separated you know, shoulders separated. yeah so I mean if she's injured she should give up the title I don't think she's retiring I think what I think if Mickey James was retiring she should deserve a little bit more of a ceremony than what that would but maybe that was so maybe that's what she wanted too, but I think she's probably just getting healthy and wants to give the title to someone yeah, else. She's always, she's always been the professional's professional, so I could see her, you know, dropping it. You know, if she's injured, to let you know. Right. I mean, her prime's over. Let's face it. Um, she revolutionized. She's one of the few that revolutionized women's wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, she 
and yeah. also went through the period of not so great wrestling too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she yeah, was, she, she, she weathered the mix. storm. Yeah. You know, ninety nine. She started in ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was my favorite diva until I saw Velvet Sky. So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like, I mean, her... If that's the career, yeah, bravo. Absolutely. Bravo. Without a doubt. You know, um, good for her. She deserves it. You know. You mentioned giving her some sort of ceremony. There's not... There hasn't really been... I mean, we see male wrestlers right, go yeah. on yeah, retirement point. runs or get the big send-off. That hasn't really been the case with women, though. That's true. Yeah, I think if there's any wrestler working today that's maybe a f- female wrestler that's working today that's maybe, let's say, within sight of retirement, that should walk out, put her boots in the center of the ring, and, and walk out. It's, it's her. But you got to look at the situation. WWE, it, okay, what is all wrestling about? Ratings, right? WWE isn't going to get a lot of ratings from doing a Mickey James retirement ceremony. Impact, impact would impact probably would. would. Yeah, so like, would. for example, like if I'm if I'm the director <laughs> of whatever content at, at Impact, I'm gonna say let's make this a big deal mm-hmm. because there's probably a lot of between WWE. She was never in AEW, was she? No, no. Yeah, between WWE and Impact, we can probably get a lot of people to watch her 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 retirement ceremony. So I mean, to, for them, if, if she is retiring, that's a lost opportunity to not do more with that. Yeah, Impact has always done well with their women. She she has to. Here's what I think. I think you're right. I I don't think she's gone. I think that this is the setup for the triumphant return in six to twelve months. She vacates the title. She goes out with her head held high. Overcomes adversity. Blah blah blah. Story story story. Comes back and then wins the title back the right way. I think this is a long term vision. Something that uh, our friends at WWE don't seem to have. But I think it could be a very good setup, assuming she does recover from the actual injuries she has. But with, let's also not forget that this is also the wrestling business, and much like the music business, never say never. Right. Five years ago, we saw Motley Crue sign a contract and say that they are never going to play again. And uh, for the last two years, they've been on tour with Def Leppard. They have. You know, Stadium tour, they're, they're, very good. You know, how many times did we see Mae Young get put through a table in her 80s? <laughs> you know, and I'll, if Vince McMahon was to call Hulk Hogan right now and the guy is half machine. The, <laughs> I was going to say, know, are we going to be putting her on a would, forklift it, and it, having a match underneath it, her? It, <laughs> it, 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 be? If he said, Hulk, come out to the real American and just give me one good right hand, he will be there. Mm-hmm. You know, so again, you know, the thought of Mickey James retiring or any wrestler, even Sting, we were talking about him coming to an end soon. Never say never. Right. There is no clear path to retirement for female wrestlers today. Yes. With the men, you basically had three paths, right? You you either uh, succumb to drugs and you die young, yeah, or you go the Jake the Snake route. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, he's back. You wash out uh, via injury, or you become a coach, Mm -hmm. right? That's the second route. Mm -hmm. So you either wash out, you become a coach, and you move on, or uh, you go to Hollywood, and you have an an entirely separate career. Maybe you dip your toe back in the water. The women's division is so new, there's no... We're just hitting it now. Trish Stratus is 47. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, especially Trish maybe isn't a great example because she looks like she could go for another 20 years, no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, But injuries eventually, even with Trish, she wrestled partially injured at WrestleMania. So those injuries are going to start to catch up, and it'll be interesting to see what happens um, when their stock isn't there anymore, what they do. Really quick, tied into this, I wanted to touch on this. Um, Mickey James' husband... Nick Aldis, yeah. at the same pay-per-view, he re-signed with Impact. Another huge free agent that reportedly WWE was interested in at one point, but they missed out on him, kind of tying into what we discussed last week. Is, is that going to affect WWE at all? Could he have affected WWE at all? Or is... I think what, like what you said in there, I think he would have been buried. Was he I... open to going? I think he's he a had star. He's a star on Impact. There comes there I comes mean, a point in time where it's like you know, look at people who leave WWE and make a character and then come back. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I think a lot of people have to do that. You look at Cody Rhodes. You look at Ooh, um, new move. Yeah, yep. yeah, who else? I can't even another. There's a bunch Matt of Hardy. Things. Yeah, Matt Hardy. Yeah, Matt Hardy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, look at all of you that had to leave, create themselves, and come back. 
I, I think it's probably better off not signing, to be honest. Yeah. Too much stuff going on. It's true. Well, obviously, we hope uh, Mickey James recovers soon and is back on our TVs. But like all the great reigns of the belt collector Kenny Omega, all good things must come to an end. So this is all we have for tonight on Wrestling With The Business. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to all of our content. Um, follow our social medias. Twitter, Wrestling With The Biz. On Facebook, too, at Wrestling With The Business. Uh, comment, send us emails, pass a note in class, whatever. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Um, and uh, you know what? We'll only bite your head off. <laughs> It'll you know be what? me. I'm on social media. Support indie wrestling. The next Mickey James <laughs> might be uh, at your local local event, so check him out. And if you keep watching, we'll keep wrestling with business.